Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I got a special for you, CO2 lasers. Now, a lot of people don't know about CO2 lasers or how to adjust the beam, and we're just gonna go over a, a brief amount of that. But let me show you around the laser so that you're more familiar with it in case you have to troubleshoot one in the field while they're using it. So there's a couple things you should be aware of. Up here is a lock. This locks the rotation of the head and the turret. Down here, this is your aperture, and this is where the laser beam comes out of. This blue is actually an adapter that will attach to a handpiece, and that is how the laser beam is emitted. So in order to get this guy out, it just rotates around, unlock it, and the whole entire armature comes out. And you can see right here, see how it's got a sticker that shows what's up and what's down? Yeah, so that just shows you that I'm already taking it out the wrong way. Here's a balance weight, it's a counterweight system, and you can see already it is not balanced because it wants to fly up. So I'm gonna slide the weight down like this because what will happen is somebody will undock the laser tube and it will just crash into the ceiling. I've seen it happen. So this counterweight is supposed to be Measured like that, so your laser arm floats perfectly balanced. It took seconds. So some of the things that you should know is the anatomy of a CO2 laser. This here is where the laser comes up. There's a main aiming mirror right here. It's adjusted in three dimensions. And the laser beam will come down this tube, come here, hit a 45 degree mirror, and then it hits a 45 degree mirror here, comes down this tube, two more joints, a third joint, and the laser comes out here. That's a lot of geometry to center a laser beam. So when we are talking about centering a laser beam, let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about. Lasers, CO2 lasers especially, all require a key to turn them on. We're gonna go into the boot up screen. On the back over here, I want you guys to take notice that there's a couple components to a laser. Uh, right here, I have a uh, blower unit, which will keep the fumes away from your mirrors down at the end. They're usually not used, but they're still on the laser, so it's up to you. This is your foot control, which activates the laser. You can also activate the laser via a uh, control signal. Normally, the wire will go down to the handpiece, and you can activate the laser there. But uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the foot control. So let's take a look. Uh, when the laser boots up, it's going to give you the software version, which is going to be very important. It is a touch screen and there's going to be a variety of options when the laser boots up. You can hear it do energy test internally. That's the different tones that you hear. It's different powers, and uh, it's the frequency that it vibrates the laser beam at. That is the sound that you're hearing. So it is completely booted up. You can see I have one error code right there. It's saying, hey, attach the foot switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the foot switch right now. The foot switch is the only item that you can connect while the laser is powered up. The hand pieces, the, the micro manipulators, will never get connected or disconnected while the laser is booted up. You have to power it down, then disconnect the cable, and then you reconnect it. Let's see, I'm gonna connect the foot switch up here. So there's a jumper right here, which is a security device. Right here is where the foot control attaches, and this one right here, this round DIN cable, this connects to the handpiece, which is attached at the blue collar down at the other end of the tube. Now that our laser is booted up, we're going to go ahead and take a look. You'll see right here, I have a red aiming dot. This is not the laser, okay? This is just an aiming dot. CO2 laser energy is invisible. You will not see it, which is also why I have this, this white cloth right here. In surgical settings, there's a lot of stainless steel. And when you have a laser, you always have to wear eye goggles but also beware 
that you're not shooting a laser at stainless steel. It bounces, it goes all over the place, and you don't see it because it's CO2. CO2 lasers are invisible. All you'll feel is a burn. So over here on the touch screen, we're gonna take a look at some of the different ways that you can use a CO2 laser. Now, one of the ones I like to use to test out the laser is ENT. And we will do a larynx. So these are preset settings. Uh, they kind of semi-control your wattage output and some other delivery devices. You can see right here, it's giving me an error code because it notices that there's not a handpiece attached or a micro manipulator. So this is gonna be your information on why your laser is not gonna fire. So we're gonna back out of this. Check, check. Here's your ready and standby indicator. So when you wanna fire the laser, you can hear, hear that loud clunk. That loud clunk is the main shutter. So right in front of your laser tube, there's a shutter. And every time I, I do that, it's opening that shutter. So when I'm ready to discharge energy, it will then do it. So right now, it's impossible for that laser beam to come up. So notice, when I step on the foot control, it does not do anything because it's not in ready state. I put it in ready. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and aim the laser in an obscure direction. Okay, ready? Okay, so what just happened is the laser beam shot down and it, it's not collimated. So as the laser beam goes further away, it spreads out. So it becomes technically less and less dangerous. But what I wanna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in standby mode, is we're gonna walk through the calibration and the centering of the laser dot. And there's a few ways to test that, but this is my favorite. So the way to test out your centering of your dot, check this guy out, see how good it is. Okay. So what I use is silk tape, which is this white opaque tape. We place it over the laser aperture. Now notice the laser is in standby mode, so it, it, it will not energize right now. All we're using is this little tiny dot right here, this red dot. Now your aiming dot is perfectly in parallel with your CO2 laser beam. So wherever the red dot is, that's where your CO2 laser is gonna hit. That's why it's called an aiming dot. So what I do is I will mark where my red dot is and then you rotate this around. You see how the red dot is moving? Almost like a solar eclipse. See that? It moves in and out of where it used to be. So that means that the dot is not centered, okay? You might have to do this in two or three different phases. We'll call this phase one, where I mark out where it's currently sitting, and then I rotate it and I find it's usually an elliptical pattern as you, mo as you rotate it around one axis. So notice I'm not moving it like this, a whole bunch of different knuckles. I'm just moving one knuckle. So you rotate it on one axis and you can see that it's rotating really far out. You see where it used to be, you can see where it currently is. It's not centered. Now normally between two and three millimeters is perfectly fine. So right now you can see that it's about, uh, let's say one and a half to two millimeters from where it used to be. That normally would be okay. But just for this video, we're gonna go ahead and go through a adjustment slash beam centering calibration. To center the beam, first thing that we gotta do is we gotta make sure that all our knuckles are tight. See this one right here, this one right here. These caps have to be tight. There's tiny little Allen screws, tiny, tiny. Okay, you can see I currently have this oriented correctly because often the beam won't be centered and that's because this arm is upside down. Make sure that everything is facing up. Make sure that your caps are tightened down correctly and that everything is nice and tight. 
So if your knuckles are not tight, which these ones all are, see this tiny little hole right here. There's a tiny, tiny little hole right there. And there's one right here. So if this junction right here is loose, what you do is you shove a tiny, tiny little Allen in the hole and you rotate it slowly until you find a notch. So when you find the notch, your wrench will slip down into it, okay? And then once you find the notch, you're going to rotate the arm while the Allen's in the notch and that will tighten it and then you pull your Allen out. And then you can go to the next junction, which would be right here. And if this junction right here is loose, then you rotate that one until it's tight. And that's how you tighten up. You'll normally find this down here at this end. And these ones all are excellent. This company uh, that has this laser does such an awesome job. So you make sure that all these points right here are tight. And normally you don't have to touch them. Only touch them if it's loose. If the junction right here is loose. This one's all tight. Make sure your end caps are tight. Once the whole entire arm is verified, there's no physical damage. If you see physical damage, like this hit the ceiling or something, you're probably gonna have to replace your arm. So if you see any physical damage, you can't center the beam anyway, because if the arm is not straight, you're not gonna get a perfect beam pad. So this laser right here is just fine. We're gonna move to the next step of laser centering, which is right here. At the top of your turret, this cap has three screws. All right, I'm gonna use a size T20. I know they're not Torx. T20 fits perfectly, it's okay. Guy up. Okay, do not lose these screws. These are all very special fasteners. Okay. So come on over here and take a look at this side. This is your master aiming mirror for the entire system. This plate is actually being held down by these two springs right here and right here. And these three screws right here actually adjust the, the geometry of the beam and that aims the beam towards the mirror right here. So this is where most of the beam centering happens. Now if you bump this mirror, it will adjust the beam. So don't just bump the mirror. Uh, we very cautiously, very slowly adjust and only adjust one screw at a time. Usually one screw ever. Because if you start messing with these, you, you will mess up the beam geometry for the whole entire tube and you'll be there for hours. So I adjust one screw, one screw only. So what I do is I will rotate the beam until it's the furthest out of spec that it could be. So if I'm this far of the center and I'm on that side of the center, what you want to do is you want to move the beam towards the center. Looks like it's a size two Allen, two millimeter. Okay, and I always start at this furthest one right here. Okay, it's so right there. It's the furthest out of spec. So what I want to do is find the half value because somewhere between those two points is center. So we're just going to bump this just a little bit. You see how that moved? So I'm moving the beam right there. I'm moving it up and down. So I know that that adjustment right there moves it up and down like this. Now one of the other screws is gonna move the beam back and forth like this. So then I go to this top one right here. Now mind you, I'm being very careful to keep all these knuckles exactly where they are. Do not move them, because you're gonna move your point. Now I adjust this one. You see that? See how I just did that? Now if you take a look, that actually looks like it's in the center of the circle. 
And the way to prove that is you're going to take your tape and you're going to reposition it again. Now they actually do have a centering jig, which is really cool. I wish I had one, which shows you where the center really is. I don't have one. So take a look at that. I'll move it real slow. So if you look, the main focus of that aiming beam is right underneath my black dot and it doesn't really migrate outside of it. So that means I'm within one millimeter of calibration. That's excellent. So there's one other way, one final way to test this out. What I will do is I create some room. You gotta have a long open space to do this. So I keep the laser arm at a, about a 45 degree angle and we're going to move one axis, which is gonna be the center point right here. So I've got this right here, I'm gonna hold it with my hand, and now I'm gonna rotate the laser, and see how far out the beam really is. See that? So the only point that we're moving is right here, and that shows you the true value of how far out it is. And the laser beam is staying really close to that center dot. So right there is about the farthest out it gets. And I would say it's about a millimeter and a half, maybe. That's really close. So this is about the farthest out it gets. Which that is, is well within spec. So once you verify that your laser beam is centered, You can go ahead and shut your laser off. We very carefully put the cover back on your turret. Okay, that's it, finger tight. So now, one of the most important things that you can do is to dock your laser correctly. Now you see how I brought that guy up? I'm gonna put it in there. Rotate your head, fits in this little U. And now with two hands, I rotate it around. It fits right there. And lock your turret. That is it. Now the other thing you gotta do, secure your laser key. Go put your laser key back in the lockbox so the staff can use it. And that is a successfully centered CO2 laser. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you liked this video. I know it was brief, but uh, there's only so much I can go into for liability reasons, but that right there will get you through a lot of situations.